Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. As winter is coming closer, it was time to make some beach scenes again. <laughs> As I actually do every year this time. <laughs> this video was basically planned to air before my exhibition, because I made those for the exhibition. But as I ran out of time due to the move, I will make this video now and show you the results that I have here. It is about the fourth or fifth or sixth, I don't know, video where I make these beaches, so you might have seen this before on other of my videos, but I must say I'm most proud of these ones, because they look, I don't know, perhaps most refined compared to all the others, so I guess this also is a learning curve. <laughs> All the materials that I have used this time you can see here on my desk, which are some seashells, some mini flip-flop shoes which I bought online on Amazon, some more decoration stuff which basically fits into the entire beach scene look, some black stones, some cord and well basically some moss. It is a dried moss that you can put in the water and it gets bigger and such. So this is basically it. Along this of course I needed to use some sand. And the sand that I'm using is aquarium sand, it is very white, it's very fine, and I mix this stuff with regular PVA glue. If you do so as well, make sure you use a PVA glue that is non-yellowing, or at least very little yellowing over time. If it yellows a little bit, it's not so much of a deal because it's sand after all, so if the sand gets a bit more yellow than white, everything should be okay, but if we have a very strong yellowing one which turns into a yellow brownish, that might look ugly over time. So mine is non-yellowing, I checked this before and the sand again is a white one. If you do not want to have white sand at all, you can just color it in with regular acrylic paint to the color whatever you want. I also did this for the next series coming for the beaches, which I made as well for the exhibition. And for those I colored the sand black. So just to see how this looks, if it looks cool, more like a lava beach or something. And it really did. So I will have this video coming here as well. And I really like this contrast there. So it's pretty amazing. You can also go crazy and color it pink or red or blue or whatever you like. But besides this, it was just mixing the sand and the PVA glue to a consistency that you like working with. If you mix it too thin, so you're having too much of the PVA glue, it will not look as sandy in the end. If you have it too thick, you will have more or less a texture or structure in it, which I personally do not like to have in my beaches. But if you want to have it more rough and texture-like, feel free to go there. My texture is basically just as thick enough that I can sculpt it on there and then levels itself, so more or less safe leveling. It is not flowing the edges from its own. If I make it flow over, it of course flows over and makes a smooth edge. Play around until you have a consistency that you like. Besides that, just pick a canvas or a surface you like. Use an MDF board, use a canvas, whatever you have lying around at home. I personally love using canvases because they are much lighter than MDF boards and the sand itself and the resin are going to add some some weight to your artwork in general. So having a light surface is in my opinion better than having something heavy as an MDF board because you want it to be rather thick to not warp in the end because you put quite a lot of liquid stuff on there. So canvas is always my way to go. And then you basically just apply everything to your surface to whatever design you wish for. If you want to be your beach a straight line, if you want to have it curved or waves in there, whatever you like, just go for it. I myself made four of the white sand ones and four of the black sand ones. So you're going to see a couple of different versions here. The only thing that I would recommend you doing in the very end is something practical, I would say. Because normally the sand mixture is going to dome up, so you will have a domed edge. But you don't want to have a domed edge when it comes to a sand water transition area. So I normally use just a spatula or a pellet knife and go over the edge just to even it out and to form a transition area towards the water. So that the resin in the end can flow a bit over the sand, which makes it look more natural than if you would have this domed effect and the resin just yeah, clashing against it. So this in the end would not look as natural as you might have wanted to look. 
My workflow is basically just adding the sand to the surface and then when everything is applied and the design is somewhat nice looking, I start decorating with all the stuff that is lying around here as well. So some of the seashells, if needed, some of the flip-flop shoes, some of the moss or black stones, whatever you want to put on there. Just as a small side note, whenever you add such things like these flip-flop shoes, you are going to run totally out of scale. Which does not really matter, because in the end it will still look cute, although your seashells might have the same size as your flip-flop shoes, which would look really, really awkward in real-life compared sizes. But for those little artworks, it really does not make any difference if they have the same size. It's just, it will be cute, you will see. <laughs> If you're up for it, you can also paint some, I don't know, fish, a shark, a lark, whatever you want to put on there in the sea area as well. I did this myself, I was not so much a fan of this because it distracts a bit too much for the entire piece, but go for it if you like so. And of course, don't overdo it with the details and the amenities that you add on there. You, you, can, you can always add more, you know, but once you add too much of it and it is too distracting or too busy in the, in the beach area, because, you know, the, the water area is not that busy after all. You have different shades of blues, you have some whites for the waves and such, but it is not as busy as it's just water. If you have an overcrowded beach area, it will distract a bit from the entire piece, I'd say. So don't overdo it. Once I was finished decorating, this had to dry. And as this is quite a thick layer of sand and PVA glue, it will take about a day or two to dry completely. It will, of course, dry on top first. So if your top coat is dry to the touch, you will be good to continue working, but it will still be a bit liquid in the middle. So don't do any pressure on it, otherwise you'll have some dents and bumps in there, which you will not get rid of again. I normally let it dry at least a day until I continue working on this. As you're working on a canvas, probably, <laughs> um, it is still good if you continue working on, on your artwork by then, because everything red can still evaporate from underneath of the canvas, so you will not block anything from drying completely. One step that I usually do, but you actually do not need to do, is I make a base layer paint of the water area. So just a somewhat very loose acrylic paint painting. So just some blues or shades of blues, just to have a base layer down there. And this is actually just my security backup plan. If for whatever reason you mix too little pigments into your resin, and your resin is too see-through, so too translucent, you will have the white of the canvas show through and you can see the texture underneath, which is something I really, really do not want to have and I'm pretty sure you do not want to have as well. So having your base layer painted in a bluish color will just prevent this from happening because even if your resin has not enough pigments in there to be opaque, you will not see the canvas through, you will just see the base layer painted and this will give it more interest and depth and structure because I normally do not paint it very smoothly, so it's just a bit rougher, you can see the brush strokes, and this will in the end look like as if there is a texture or a structure underneath of your waterline. So like some ground texture, which you can see through the clear, tropical, super sweet salt water. <laughs> yeah, w whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean. And then you just apply the resin of your choice, once this layer is dry, of course. And therefore you can go for the resin of your dreams. I usually like to switch between the three resins I have used so far, which is the Art Resin, the Resonate Resin and the Mastercast Resin. The Mastercast and the Art Resins are longer curing, so we have about 45 minutes working time until everything starts to cure. The Resonate Resin was my go-to medium there because it only has about 15 minutes working time. Which is great because you do not really need so much time there. It's a pretty quick process and it, yeah, it cures way quicker. So it's dry to the touch after 4 hours already and it is safe to put aside and this was yeah, my go-to version. When it comes to coloring your resin you can use whatever you like. Basically you can use acrylic paints, you can use pigments or you can use resin pigment pastes. 
Whatever you have, whatever you like to use, it all has pretty much the same effect. If you go for acrylic paint, which is totally fine, make sure to not use too much of it. So only about 5-ish percent of the amount of the resin should be the amount of the acrylic paint. It sounds very little, but it is totally fine. It is totally enough to color everything in really nicely. And if you added more of the acrylic paint, it just goes and gums up your, your resin. It changes the curing times. Strange thing happen, don't do it. And here again, there is this rule. You can always add more if needed. <laughs> I usually mix about two or three different shades of blues just to get some kind of transition from dark deep ocean to a more shore coastline. And of course you will need some whitish color yeah, to create the waves in the end. As I like working on the safety side, so not pouring tons of resin on there, I always use as little as I need to cover everything completely and I use my palette knife to spread it around, which also again creates this intermixing effect and this transition zones and a bit more like waves. Yeah, they are dark and light in changing manner, you know? This is really hard to explain in English. So, but yeah, you have different shades of blues coming from the dark heap blue sea yeah and then when this is done and you're happy with the result and the look you can add some tiny white lines with your white resin mix and this in the end will of course create the waves or the, the foam that the waves create also against the transition line of the sand so this is always the area where i add the most of the white just to have this transition yeah foamy ravey area there of course, it is always, always a good idea to add glitter to your paints. I don't understand the question, why not? <laughs> and even for the white, I have some white glitter, which is really, really cool and sparkly. And for the deep, dark blue as well, there is some blue glitter in there. It, it just looks more, it just looks prettier, you know? When you walk by and this glitter sparkle in your, in your eye, it just, yeah. Yeah, you, you have to you have to use glitter. <laughs> but once more, if it comes to the color of the blue itself, it's again your choice. If you like this dark blue to towards a light blue transition, or if you just want to go for a turquoise, for example, if it's more like a Caribbean setting, totally up to you. You also can go crazy there and make a purple water, a green one, yeah, perhaps not a green one, but yeah, use whatever color you like. Who, who says this has to be an earth beach, you know? Beaches are all around there. So color, color it in the color you like. <laughs> I always want to make a purple one, but I never, I never did it so far. Should I do this? Would you see a purplish, somewhat other colored, a golden perhaps? Would a golden beach look cool? Let me know in the comments. I would really love to hear what you think about which colors I should use. I didn't yet finish the black ones because I ran out of time because of the move before the exhibition. So most of them were not finished by them. So I still have to complete the black ones. So if you're up for a certain color for this for the water, let me know. I might I might try this. Yeah. <laughs> and besides all of that, I also have all these four white sand blue waterish. Um, beach is still left, so they were not finished for the exhibition, so I still have them. I'll put them on Etsy soon, and if you would like to adopt one of them, just have a look there or contact me here in this video beforehand. <laughs> yeah, basically this was everything that I can tell about the process that I was making for those. I of course hope you liked again watching me and following me along. And I hope you wanted board if you have seen all my other five videos about this topic already. Let me know perhaps if you like them also more than the others that I did. So design wise, not technique wise. And if you liked my video in general, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done so far for more tutorials, talking like that, perhaps some more lives in the future. And if you are curious what else I'm making, head over to my playlist and you can switch between the acrylics, the resin, the realism, oil paintings, sketches, charcoal drawings, whatever. Just have a look there and text me if you have any questions. 
besides that i of course would be super happy if you could share this video with your friends family and everyone who would like to see it and if you make your own beaches please make sure to tag me on instagram or facebook and show me your results i really would love to see what you came up how you decorated them what color schemes perhaps you used just let me know i would really love to see them and yeah, materials that I've used are linked below in the video description as well as my social media. Just have a look there. And I look forward to read some of your comments and other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. <laughs> have a great day. Bye bye.